Hey everyone, I'm going to take this 8 foot cedar decking board that you could get at any home center and I'm going to turn it into this, a fun whimsical little birdhouse. Stay tuned! <laughs> My son really loves birds and I wanted to make him a birdhouse that would sit outside his window. I also wanted it to look great regardless if birds decided to live there or not. So the first thing I did was I took the 8 foot cedar decking board and I cut it down to rough lengths uh, using my cross cut sled. And after I had those all cut down to size I lowered my saw blade to about a half inch to cut grooves in the front and backs of the birdhouse and I did this by cutting a half inch groove on one side and then flipping the board up bringing the fence over at about a half inch and cutting the other side off. Now if you're not using a table saw to actually make this birdhouse you could use a router to make these grooves and at this point I actually started cutting the roof portion and these were cut at about 45 degrees and 30 degrees and you could use a chop saw to make these cuts as well and after I had the roof I measured it with a protractor to get the angle and then I cut one side of the roof off so that it lines up perfectly that way no water gets in and then I cut the walls and the walls I had at six inch by half inch strips and if you notice as I'm cutting sometimes there's a little uh, notch that's left over in cuts like this and this is why I carry a little hand plane around uh, to actually remove those notches this way when we're making repeat cuts like this um, they actually line up and stay perfectly flush to the side of the fence when making the cut and I didn't actually cut all the pieces down to half inch I left about an inch and a half on each of the boards that I had and this gave me enough to work with to make the ears for the birdhouse and I glued them up uh, using my parallel clamps. They have really wide jaws, so I used both of them, sandwiched them up. This way they didn't slip when it came down to gluing. And then I used my anchor jig again to make the uh, angled cuts for the ears. And these were cut at 45 degrees and 30 degrees. And uh, since this was a cut that was so close to the blade, I actually used a clamp to hold the piece down this way my hands were far enough away and it was a much safer cut and then I took my hand plane and added a chamfer on each of the half inch strips that I cut earlier for the walls and uh, you could use a router to do this as well I prefer using a hand plane it was actually kind of funny because then I gave these little thin strips that maybe the birds could use to make a bird's nest in the end and then I glued these up so that alignment and putting it together would be a lot easier later. And I had one clamp on the back end so that everything was straight and equal. And then I put pressure on the front and then clamped them all up together. And then I attached the backboard to the main board that would attach the post that I'm putting this up on. And I made sure that the two pieces were clamped together while I was screwing them in. This way they wouldn't shift. And then it was time to actually put the hole in for the bird to actually get inside. And this I chose a one, one and a quarter inch hole. Uh, I did some research on the type of birds that are in my area. And uh, this is probably the best option for me. And you can change this if you'd like or if you have different birds in your region. Uh, and then it was on to the carving process and uh, I'm not actually using traditional carving tools here I'm just using a knife and a bench chisel and using every part of that bench chisel to make this cut. I'm using the corners to cut the sides. Uh, if you've seen my other videos I explain how the basics of whittling and using a knife uh, and this is the same principle you just use the knife to create the outline and then use the bench chisel to remove the waste and then you just keep going and redefining that line and then once I was done with the carving it was time to put the whole thing together and I used a bead of glue here 
on each side and uh, I do realize this is not necessarily the most traditional way of doing something like this there is a lot of cross grain happening here um, but we'll see what happens with wood movement and the weather and how this thing actually holds up now the tricky part about using a pin nailer is sometimes the nails actually pop out the sides um, but this could be easily corrected just to make sure that you're orienting the gun properly when shooting the nails in the tricky the real tricky part was actually attaching the ears without having them protrude out the sides and I just had to make sure that I was holding the gun at an angle that would clear properly and if I did see a nail pop out the other side I made sure to cut it down and make sure that it wasn't sticking out and then it was time to put the shingles up and I actually saved a few of the off cuts when ripping the sides and uh, I used those for the shingles and uh, hand plane to make sure that they fit perfectly and they weren't extended too much and then I just tacked them down with the pin nailer again and there you have it now I did want to make some through holes to the side of the wall so that the little ears could act as uh, ventilation for inside the box but uh, I decided against it not knowing how it would take to the weather and water and at this point you have to make sure so I'm gluing up the roof and I had to make sure that it was a tight seal so I added glue and then I pinned the whole thing down with a pin nailer and this was just to make sure that water wouldn't get into the seam uh, or through the roof and actually drench the birds if they did decide to build a nest in this birdhouse. Now when you're preparing the bottom, you have to make sure that there's a gap um, so that if it does ever fill with water, there's a place for it to drain. I also added a chamfer at the bottom with my hand plane. And this is just so that it would fit really nicely when I put it together. And using something called a gator bit, I added a hook to the bottom. And this would serve two purposes. One, to remove the bottom when it was time to clean it out. And also, if, I, if birds decided not to live there, I could hang a decoration off of it. Um, and I made sure to use screws to attach the bottom. And the reason for this was that screws are easy to remove and I could also use it to clean it out. Now I could have left the birdhouse the way it was at this point, but I decided that it needed a little bit more contrast and I really didn't want to paint the birdhouse um, with paint, so I decided to go another route and um, actually burn the roof and parts of it. And I'm using a taping knife to actually act as a barrier from the flame um, and parts that I don't want scorched. And this way it would give me crisp lines and I won't have to go back and sand off a lot of the burned areas that I didn't want burnt. And uh, I'm also using a butane torch and you could use a propane torch as well. I like these because they're small and they're fairly easy to maneuver. Um, you could also control the flame uh, if you'd like. You also have to make sure that if you're doing anything like this that you do it safely. If you notice I'm doing this outside, I don't want any extra fumes. I'm used to using a torch like this, so I'm taking as many safety precautions as I can. Now I could have left the birdhouse the way it was at this point, but I decided to take it a step further and uh, carve shingles to the roof. And what I did was I took a marking gauge and marked out at one inch increments the lines where I wanted the shingles to be and then I took my knife and deepened those those lines and after that and what that what that did was it actually created a, a sort of fence for my chisel to use as a guide so I, I'm using a pairing chisel here and this is a very long chisel uh, it is, works very much like a bench chisel, but it has happens to have a very long neck, uh, which makes this process a lot easier. Now, I didn't actually know if I was going to carve the top or not, so I had to make sure to actually deepen the the pin nails that I put in earlier so that I wouldn't ruin the edge on my chisel as well. <laughs> 
and if you see now I'm just finishing up the details and then I could just burn it up again to bring back the original dark color that I wanted and then I just sanded it down and I was done and there you have it a whimsical birdhouse made from one single cedar decking board now you could make this birdhouse in a single day if you have the plans and luckily for you I have the plans available for you on my website there's a link in the description below and if you haven't already please be sure to check out my other build videos